A pot still can be a very useful apparatus to separate a mixture of chemicals. It is most commonly used to distill alcohol, but it can be also used to recycle acetone or purify other chemicals. So now I'll just quickly go over what I use to make it. There will be a little bit of plumbing which will require a blowtorch, copper flux and solder. I used a pressure cooker to service the pot because it's easily sealable. The actual still portion will consist of copper pipe and assorted fittings. You will need some hosing to pass water through the condenser and a faucet adapter or a pond recirculator depending on the method of cooling you choose. You can use water directly from the faucet and pass it through the condenser or you can employ a closed system and have it recirculated through from a bucket using the pond recirculator. Both methods are equally viable but I opted to attach my hosing to the faucet directly. If distilling ethanol from a fermentation, you can expect using my design an alcohol percentage of about 85% after one run. Keep in mind though that there is much more than simply pouring in your fermentation and running the still. A video specifically regarding ethanol distillation will follow this one shortly. This is what the final pot still with everything hooked up looks like and I will quickly run through how I put it all together. For my pot still I opted to use a reflux column to allow for greater separation but many pot still designs don't use a reflux column. Keep in mind that this still is a design that I just came up with by looking at images I found online. I'm not going to include any measurements of pipe length or anything like that because I feel that takes away a lot of the fun of coming up with your own design. Besides, you can easily see every piece I used to make the still if you want to recreate something with a similar design. I don't have the time in this video to go over the intricacies of distiller design, but if you're even thinking of building one, I highly suggest you do some research online before you start anything. There are many things to take into consideration when building a distiller, and if you don't, things can become dangerous. The first step was to make a large hole in the pressure cooker. Conveniently, there was a bolt that could be removed and once removed would leave behind a hole. And then the slightly difficult part would be to enlarge the hole. For me, the easiest thing was to abuse an old drill bit and grind away the metal using the side of it. Be careful if you do this because the drill bit can easily snap and be dangerous. So after using the drill bit for a while, the hole was big enough that I could file down the rest. So using a file, I manually filed away the hole until it was pretty circular. I was then able to hammer in the copper adapter and it fit pretty snugly in the hole. However, keep in mind that no matter how snugly it appears to fit, it's still going to leak when you run the distiller. So at this point you have two options. You can either braze or weld the copper fitting to the stainless steel pot, or you can use flour paste to seal it every time. Flower paste is an easy and effective method to stop small leaks. Next we build the copper still. I'll go over the basics of soldering copper pipe but keep in mind I am definitely not a plumber and my technique is probably pretty lacking. The first step is always to sand away the outer oxide layer. Next I lazily use my finger to apply flux paste to the end of the copper pipe. I'm pretty liberal with how much I use but keep in mind that it's better to use too much than it is to use too little. It's also important not to forget to sand the inside of the fitting you're attaching it to. Then, just for good measure, I apply some flux to the inside of the adapter. Then, using a torch, I heat up the pipe. I also definitely apply much more heat and much longer than I need to, but since we're not doing actual plumbing, it's not a real issue. Then, once the piping is hot enough, we apply some of the solder. If the pipe is hot enough, the solder should melt nearly instantly and the liquid solder should suck into the fitting. You actually don't need very much solder, but I tend to overdo it. The construction of the condenser column is a little more complicated. So here in this shot, I show how all of the pieces go together. The inner pipe is where the vapors will pass, and in between the outer and inner pipe is where the cold water will run. Two holes are drilled into the outer pipe, which is where I will solder two pieces of copper tubing which will serve as the water in and out. This is just to show you what the piece looks like once it's soldered to the pipe. It's important that the small adapter pipe does not stick into the larger one because this could impede the flow of water. 
The adapters at each end hold the inner and outer pipe. The inner pipe must pass completely through the adapter and normally there are little ridges that prevent this. You'll need to use a file and grind away the ridge so that the inner pipe can slide through freely. This is just a shot of what the final polished product looks like. At the end, using a thermometer adapter, I fitted a thermometer to the apparatus. To connect the still to my sink, I needed two things. A universal faucet to hose converter and tubing with a hose adapter. So pretty simply unscrew the nozzle that's currently on your sink and replace it with the universal hose adapter. Then screw in your tubing and you're done. So again this final shot is what the completed still looks like. I added a 45 degree bent angle adapter and some copper pipe to the bottom of the condenser but this doesn't need to be soldered. To heat the pressure cooker, I use a camping stove that I got from Walmart for about $15. Depending on what you distill, you will have to decide whether or not you want to pack the column or not. Column packing is only needed if the components of the mixture have very close boiling points. For example, in ethanol water distillation, if one used a simple distillation apparatus, you can expect the final distillate to be about 60% ethanol. If fractional distillation is used, an ethanol percentage of 96% is pretty achievable. The reason you can't get 100% ethanol out is because ethanol and water form an azeotrope. A mixture of 96% ethanol and 4% water boils at a temperature lower than pure ethanol. People commonly use stainless steel dish scrubbers to pack the column and these work pretty well. But many other things work and I often use just small marbles with pretty good success. The efficiency of separation though is directly related to the surface area of the column packing. So using something with a high surface area such as the pot scrubbers should afford a greater separation.